Hello, my friends, and welcome back. We are still here, PlayStation Live from E3 in Los Angeles. And I have some very special guests on the stage with us talking about 1111 Memories Retold, Yoan, uh, and also Elijah Wood, who fans may recognize oh. from certain <laughs> cinematic events. Uh, <laughs> cinematic uh, events? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, It's so good to have both of you, Meredith, you. Uh, on stage as well. So thank, thank you. Um, I mean, Elijah, before we get to your performance in 1111, Yoan, maybe you could talk about, you were the creative director on Valiant Hearts. Yes. Uh, you are, are you the creative director on 1111 uh, uh, yes. 11 as well? Tell me a little bit about your vision and sort of your core philosophy in 1111. This, this game is uh, all about uh, revive the heritage of World War I because it's a war that is a bit forgotten compared to World War II. And, and uh, compared to all of the games about war, this game really talks about human, like not about war as a gamey thing, but as a real thing and, and what people experience during war with their family, with their friends. So mm. it's, it's all about the humanity and the, the peace at the end. Yeah. And to do that, you kind of tell the story of Harry, who's a, a photographer from yes. Canada. Yes. Who, uh, let's see, set, it's in November of 1916. Yes. And that's where Mr. Wood comes in. Yeah. He's, he's the one. <laughs> <laughs> so, Elijah, we were talking backstage. You yeah. came onto this project fairly recently. Yeah, a couple of months ago, wasn't it? Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, tell me a little bit about sort of what about the project drew you in and kind of, uh, you know, encouraged you to take it on. Well, sort of what he was saying about the approach to a war game that eschews the notion of shooting. Um, th th we're so used to war games being about sort of FPS-based, sort of, you know, a lot of fun, but it, it sort of misses some of the humanity of the storytelling. And the fact that this is primarily about two characters who are stuck in a situation where they're both from opposing sides and they have to help each other out to get out of a precarious situation, and they recognize the humanity in each other, and it's not about being on opposing sides of the war. At that moment, it's about helping each other. And I just loved that about it. And I also love the art style. Mm -hmm. You know, Ardman Entertainment, who, are, who people are probably familiar with in regards to Wallace and Gromit and Chicken Run, are, are, are the people that are helping them do the art style with this very sort of painterly, um, almost sort of evolving watercolor sort of uh, yeah. approach, which I was really intrigued about as well. Yeah, the, the whole game is like a living painting, so it's very artistic, it's very unique. It's a, it has a unique style that you've never seen before. When you're working in that art style, does that change the way you as a creative director and as a storyteller pursue the vision that you're trying to set out to do? How, do, how does the two inform each other, the art style and the narrative? It's, it's uh, something close to impre impressionism. So it's close to Monet, Van Gogh, this kind of, of um, style. And it is there to fit the, the emotion like the, the intensity of emotion that they can have during the, the journey through war is very intense, as you can guess. And, and with painting, you can, you can feel this emotion because it's not realistic at all. It's, it's a way to represent what you feel in your mind. Mm. The strokes, they move, the, it's a living something. Mm. I also yeah, noticed the in, the, in the trailer, you have such a haunting soundtrack, just that one little trailer. Was the music something that you were considering as you were thinking of the painterly style, or did one inspire the other? Yes, we, uh, we didn't reveal yet who is the composer, but he's a very great one. And uh, we recorded in uh, London, in a famous studio. It, it's something also that will add a lot to the experience. And we worked with the composer from the start of the story. So he was involved into the, the storytelling itself. Oh, and uh, as you can hear, we recorded a, a choir a big choir, because choir is the, you know, the human... The human voice, yeah. Yeah, it's very important. I don't, I don't want you to have to give away too much, but in terms of the gameplay and the mechanics that players can expect in, in your game, can you tell us a little bit about the moment to moment? So it's a narrative game, so it's all about the choices that you're going to take during the journey. Uh, for example, at a certain moment, Harry is on the battlefield in uh, Passchendaele. It's a, a city in Belgium. And there was a big battle in Passchendaele, and, and you have a lot of wounded on the floor, and, and you have to choose as a player, as Harry, you have to choose, like, my job is to take pictures of that. He's an official photographer. But, like, what should you do? Should you just take pictures, do your job, or should you just help the guy and, yeah. that is on the floor? Like, this so kind sort of, of moral choices. 
That's interesting. Now, you, you actually have these two characters. Do you, in the gameplay, bounce between Harry and the other character, or are you always with the same protagonist? Yes, that, that's the thing of the game. It's all about the two sides, mm. like you can see on the logo. And on one side is Harry, on the other side is Kurt, a German, that is an engineer, is doing um, technical stuff on the front. And both, both of them have, have no weapon. So Harry has a camera, and uh, Kurt has a uh, wired uh, tools. Hmm. Elijah, I was wondering if you could speak to the fact that, I mean, in your, in your career in, as an actor, you've done such physically expressive work. And in voice, I mean, you're kind of exercising a whole different set of skills. But yeah. I'm wondering kind of how you adapt, how you, you know, leverage different techniques, and where your acting comes from for this role. Well, voice is, I mean, in some ways it's really freeing because you're not having to consider yourself physically. Um, it's all of all your voice. I suppose the challenge, to, to your point, comes in if there is physicality within the context of, the, of what the character is going through, trying to express that in front of a microphone <laughs> without being able to By physically yourself. move <laughs> is its own kind of challenge, but I, but I really love it. And, and you know, the... The game and the scenarios are so evocative, and they were so wonderful in terms of describing the sequences, and I saw some of the footage as well. All of that kind of helps to paint a really clear picture of what's necessary from the character at any given stage. So I just love it. We, sh we yeah. recorded over the course of two days absolutely everything. It was kind of a marathon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that, that was very easy, in fact, because Elijah is a gamer, so it's more easy to understand, like, uh, okay, this line is, could be weird, but it's a video game, so you have to explain something to the player, and you have to repeat it, you know, many times with variation. And for Alija, it was very easy because as a gamer, you totally understand <laughs> why you have to repeat that line again and again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was very funny. Yeah, these are reaction lines, these are lines of dialogue, this is narration, but all, yeah, being a gamer, all that stuff was pretty familiar. Oh, yeah. And you don't have to go through a wardrobe or makeup right? or anything. <laughs> exactly. So much are there easier. certain yeah. video games that really inspired you for this performance? I'm sorry? Are there certain video games that just have inspired you? There wasn't the voice th actors? There, not really. I mean, it, as it pertains to this particular character, it was really just the script that they had written. Um, you know, the sort of innocence of this character. It was all very clear where he was coming from and ultimately how the war and the experience changed him. Um, and I was just trying to add as much realistic emotion to that sort of experience. It works very well. Cool. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> Elijah, and I know I think it's great that, you know, a, a professional actor, sometimes like people like myself don't often assume that you play video games just for fun. <laughs> right. But you do. Yeah. And I was just wondering, like, kind of what, what do they mean to you? Like, what draws you to them? What are the things that resonate with you the most in, in games? I mean, probably character and story. I think, you know, obviously I play all kinds of games that don't necessarily rely on those things. Um, but, you know, something like The Last of Us, that elicits emotional responses. And that's sort of the, to me, the, the height of, of video games in terms of what they're capable of doing is sort of similar to film. It can actually draw you in and you feel like you're a part of a sort of cinematic experience, but you're really paying attention to characters. And I love those kinds of games. Absolutely. Yoan, before I let you go, if you could convey one thing about your game to our audience here today and, and kind of your hopes for it, what would it be? I think it's, it's all about the ending because it's called 11-11 uh, and it, it finishes at 11-11, a.m. That means something, so it's all about the, the ending. And you can tell us the ending right now, right? <laughs> uh, in fact, there are, no, 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 no. there are 28 endings. So. <laughs> um, and Elijah. it comes out this November, right? Yes. Yeah. This November. Exactly. Well, Elijah, Yoan, thank you both so much thank for Thank you so much for having stage. us. Meredith, thank you for My uh, hosting with me. Thank Thanks you. to everyone in our audience here. At Thanks, guys. Thank you to everyone watching at home. We have a lot more coming. PlayStation Live for Me 3 continues from Los Angeles. Stay with us. PlayStation.